So, it's been a fair while since I last talked about the Dragon Prince, since we had that pretty cool looking teaser trailer for the upcoming season. And recently, I saw a couple of posts talking about how they were frustrated that there'd been not much transparency or news about when this year that the season's going to release. And that got me thinking about the show in general, and how it seems to me that the hype for this thing seems to have completely disappeared over the course of the show's run. Honestly, it's a bit of a masterclass in that regard. How the hell do you kill the hype so thoroughly? Like, seriously, when this thing was released, it was on fire. At least, comparatively on fire. It's not like it was a new avatar in terms of its popularity and scope, but those early seasons, they were still something special. Widely popular. Audience acclaim. Critical acclaim. And coming out back to back to back. Not much of a gap between the various different release dates. Season 1, where we meet the characters of Callum and Rayla and Ezrin, we introduce the conflict of the story, the world, the drama. That came out in September 2018, six years ago almost. Season 2, which continues to build the drama, develop Raylam, establish more of Viren's personality and his treachery, came out only five months later. A relatively quick turnaround between seasons, and then you get that conclusion to the majority of the show's storylines in Season 3, with Viren getting whacked, Zim goes back home with his mum, Raylam had set sail, they had epic battles, Callum was able to use his magic without a primal stone, the first human ever to do so, they'd cultivated the fan base, the hype had grown with each season, the story had reached that pinnacle, and they had a lot of really exciting dramatic payoffs, and so the expectation would be they would be getting more seasons shortly, after all, the first three came out rapid fire, so why not these? And so from the get-go, I think you have that somewhat unreasonable expectation that each season is going to release in only a matter of months, rather than a year like many other shows. That the studio would be able to maintain that rapid-fire pace of release dates, which honestly, like, no, they were never going to live up to that. Seems like they'd been working on those first three seasons concurrently, or at least somewhat concurrently. A bit of overlap here and there. That's what I'd expect, at least. Hence why they were able to churn out the seasons so quickly. And I guess maybe they hadn't been fully greenlit for future seasons on Netflix, and so they had to wait for that to happen to start proper production for the future. And that's fine. A wait of maybe 18 months or so, that would be reasonable. Season 3 to 4, and I don't think the hype would have suffered too much. And really, it's nobody's fault for this one. But then the problem is you get COVID, and that was the first sign of trouble. As with COVID, well, it caused problems for the industry as a whole, and smaller studios like this, they suffered even more. They had less infrastructure and money to deal with the work from home side of things, and so delays, delays, delays. And once again, not the fault of the studio, but who the hell could have seen a global pandemic coming, right? Like, it was an absurd prospect to think about during much of 2019, and so, yeah, it wasn't really their fault here, but at the same time, it meant that we didn't end up getting season 4 until like 2022, the end of 2022. And that was three whole years. Three whole years of not much, just radio silence for the most part. And so in my eyes, the fandom almost seemed to go into hibernation. Discussion dropped off, the hype dropped off, nobody was talking about it much after a while, which, yeah, I guess that's normal. But every time a scrap of news or whatever would come out, that feeling was restored. The fandom would once again be in bloom, you love to see it. But then it would fade again, only to return at a later date. And then we get season four, the long-awaited season. Our king had returned, hooray! Time to celebrate. And I feel like the hype at that point in time was massive again, like a peak era had returned. And remember, I said earlier that the big delay, which did damage the hype of the show, let's not lie, wasn't really the creator's fault. And that's true, but this next one, it definitely is. And yeah, they returned all right, and everyone was excited, but they returned with some truly baffling creative decisions, and in all honesty, the show just did not feel the same. And I think this is almost entirely encapsulated by one storyline above all else. And that is the Callum and Rayla storyline, a classic of the franchise. Like, yeah, there's a storyline about going to return the egg of the Dragon Prince and then him hatching. And then there's the plot about Royal Mage Viren going crazy power-hungry and taking over the Kingdom of Catullus, betraying the children of his supposed best friend in the process, and also him invading Zadia and working with Erevos. But, like, let's be real. The storyline that got everyone the most invested in the story, that was the dynamic and the interplay between Rayla and Callum. That was the big draw. Let's not beat around the bush. And who's really surprised, right? Shipping. Shipping in my coming-of-age cartoons? Oh, <laughs> I think not. But yeah, season one, you meet those characters, and they're sort of enemies, not really friends, and slowly but surely, you see that relationship start to defrost, to thaw, for them to start to trust each other. This is classic stuff. They start to be friends and whatnot, and then you start to get that friends-to-feelings sort of vibe. Yes. Yes. 
everybody was vibing with this. Like I said, it became the focal point of the show to the point that at the end of it all, Callum's big moment, where he's able to use magic to create wings and save the day and become the hero, it's all through his love for Rayla and his desperation to save her from becoming a red stain at the bottom of the mountain like Viren. Man, the hype, even with the big hiatus, there was no way that this ship did not get people pumped and invested once more. Because we finally get to see the next stage of things, the new storyline for these characters, it's gonna be great, or maybe not, as they broke up off screen in a book, which is just... <laughs> My god, I just, I don't know how anybody thought this was a legitimately good idea. And I don't think I'm going too far as to say that whoever thought of this is a hack. And then on top of that, they have the lamest reunion angle of all time, where Callum's told he is a loser for even caring she dumped him in the first place and left him for years. And in the meantime, she got nothing done. She accomplished nothing in the hiatus. She accomplished nothing at all. Meaning that this story beat occurred for no real reason at all. They just move these characters and their bond back to square one for no real reason because they are unable to think of a fresh story for the characters. Nothing beyond that. All they could think is, hmm, maybe we should break them up for some forced drama and just keep spinning wheels as they slowly get back together again. That's what the people want, right? Wrong. No, 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 no. The audience is going to eat it up. Trust me, bro. Trust me. Spoiler alert. They did not, in fact, eat it up. And whilst this is probably the worst of the writing, it felt like it did pretty much encapsulate the whole vibe of that season. It just did not feel the same. It was fun enough for what it was, but it was almost like time had passed it by. The magic was fading fast. And so, despite the fandom seemingly being massively excited for the release of Season 4, I feel like as soon as it was over, people stopped caring at all. In a way that they didn't stop caring after the first three seasons. The community died off almost instantly. And then when the next season was announced, whilst there was hype, it felt noticeably and obviously lesser than it had in the past. Just completely and utterly lesser in every way. And whilst I honestly think the writing for the most recent season was much improved on whatever they decided to do for season 4, I don't think it was enough to turn the tide back, so to speak. And that's a pretty sad realisation, but it just ain't it. But hey, it's not like the show can get any colder, right? Right? Like, surely it's bottomed out by this point. Like, you'd think that, wouldn't you? We have two seasons to go. We had the last season out in, what, July of 2023? So we haven't quite waited a year just yet, but we're not all that far off. But of more note to me is that, one, we got the trailer for this thing in, like, what, November? So five months ago now. We've had cons and panels that have been and gone. No concrete news about a release date. And so we slip closer and closer to that year gap between seasons, which under normal circumstances, like I said, is fine and expected. But in a fandom that is ice cold, and who you've conditioned to getting rapid fire seasons between arcs, I don't know, it just feels like a bit of a blunder. And on top of that, it does not look good when there's just radio silence about the status of the thing. Like, yeah, a gap of a year is fine. But you'd at least expect them five months from the release of the trailer hyping up the show to have settled on some sort of public release date. It's honestly just absurd. And it further makes the hype die off because with no new release date, there's less looking forward to it. You think about it less because there's no goal in sight. You're not thinking, oh, Dragon Prince comes out soon. Dragon Prince comes out soon. You just think, eh, it's supposed to come out at some point. Those hard release dates, they do so much to develop excitement. And without them, it just makes it feel more abstract. And like, I've even heard word that it's straight up finished, the latest season. Like, don't quote me on that, but I have heard that somewhere. I just can't quite remember where. But it leaves me thinking, why? Why would you not release it then? And this one would be a Netflix issue, you'd assume. Like, are they going to pull a Warner Bros and just cancel it and shelve it for tax reasons forever? Have they somehow forgotten about it because it's so irrelevant to them and their numbers? Are they trying to find a slot for it to release because they think it's going to move the needle? Like, ugh, at this point, I'm just... I'm just sad, man. Because to tell you the truth, I used to think about this show quite a lot. I like to come up with theories, like to participate in the fandom and all that, but now I just don't care. Couldn't give a shit. I'll still watch the show. Of course I will. But I think a lot of people are in the same boat as me. They might watch it at some point when it finally drops, but it's no longer must-see. It's no longer on their radar, really. They'll just see it when they see it. And I think that's just sad. Feels bad, man. Like, ugh. It really does feel like COVID murdered this show. It has never been the same since the end of season three. And hopefully it never gets to the point where we all pretend like season three was the true ending and that Viren stayed dead. Much like a lot of people start to pretend like the ending of Game of Thrones was with Daenerys sailing to Westeros at the end of season six, before it was mysteriously and inexplicably cancelled forever. Strange that. 
I wonder what would have happened if she made it to Westeros. Anyway, though. So yeah, nothing else to say really except these have all been my opinions and now I'd like to hear yours. What do you think about what I've had to say? Am I on the money with this one? Is the show being majorly mishandled or am I being a bit too harsh, do you think? Expecting too much out of poor little Netflix slash the production studio. I'm honestly curious for your thoughts, so make sure to like, comment and subscribe and let me know.